In this video, we're going to discuss half-life, which is the time required to go from some initial concentration to a concentration which is half that value. So to start off, we're going to look at first-order reactions, and the first-order integrated rate law is that the concentration of A as a function of time is equal to the initial concentration of A, A0, times E to the minus KT, where k is our rate constant and t is time. Okay, so to calculate half-life, we want to see how long, what is the time required, or t half, in order for a to go to half of its initial value. So its initial value is a naught, so we're going to set this equal to one half of a naught. All right, so next thing we're going to do, we've got a naught on both sides. We're going to divide both sides by that and then take the logarithm. So the a naughts are going to cancel. And when we take the log of e to the minus kt, we're going to get minus kt. And we when we take the log of 1 half, that is going to equal log of 1 half, which is equal to the minus log of 2. The logarithm of the inverse, you just switch the sign because it's like taking it to the minus first power and exponents can come out in front for logarithms. Okay, so we got minus kt equals minus log 2. So we can add we can uh, add a plus sign to both of those, change the sign there. So if kt equals natural log of 2. So what we have here is divide both sides by k and our half-life, t half, for a first order reaction equals the natural log of 2 divided by the rate constant. So that's cool. So the concept of half-life is particularly useful for first order reactions because the half-life is independent of initial concentration. So if your half-life is 10 minutes, then in 10 minutes you'll have half as much of your initial concentration. In another 10 minutes, you'll have a quarter as much. In another 10 minutes, you'll have an eighth as much. Every 10 minutes, the concentration is decreasing by half, and it doesn't matter what the concentration is that you start with. Okay, so that's all nice to work with. So we have our first order half-life. As I said there, so our reactant disappears at a rate which is at a half-life which is independent of its concentration. And uh, just so we know, uh, the natural log of 2, the value of that is approximately, if we give it to three digits, it's 0 0.693. So sometimes you'll see this value, t half equals 0 0.693 over k, and then uh, that gives you uh, the same value there. It's just the natural log of 2. Also notice that the unit of rate constant for a first-order reaction is just inverse seconds. So it's on the denominator here. So 1 over 1 over seconds is just seconds. So the inverse of our rate constant uh, times the natural log of 2 gives us this half-life, gives us our time scale for that reaction decay. Okay, that's first order. What about second order reaction? So our second order integrated rate law, most conveniently expressed in this way, 1 over the concentration of A as a function of time equals 1 over the initial concentration plus rate constant times time. Okay, so we do the same thing as before. We set that equal to uh, 1 half a naught, but 1 half a naught, a naught is on the denominator here, so 1 over 1 half a naught is 2 over a naught. Okay, so we have that. So uh, we have this 1 over a naught on this side. We want to subtract that over. So we're going to subtract a uh, 1 over a naught from both sides. So this 2 is going to become a 1. This 2 is going to become a 1. And then that is going to disappear. So we're going to have... Uh, and then we can also just go ahead and divide by k as well. Finish out the steps here. If t half equals for second order reactions, we're going to get it's 1 over k times the initial concentration. Okay, so this is our second order half-life. 
All right, so that's our second order. What you'll notice is that unlike our first order, the half-life is independent of concentration. The half-life just keeps chugging along no matter what. For second order, our half-life increases as time goes on. It increases as our reactant concentration declines and declines because our half-life is getting longer and longer as our concentration is getting smaller and smaller because it depends on the square. The rate depends on the square of its concentration. So, and it half-life also decreases with increasing initial concentration. So if my initial concentration gets higher and higher, my, my first half-life is going to get smaller and smaller there. Okay, uh, lastly, we can go ahead and, for good measure, just look at zero-order uh, reactions. So we haven't looked at the zero-order integrated rate law, but it's pretty simple to work with. We have, so we have, all right, K, or sorry, we just have V of T equals K because uh, there's a zero order rate dependence. There's no dependence on either one of these uh, individual concentrations of any reactants that we have. So the, the reaction rate is just constant. It's whatever your rate constant is. So this is equal to, as we saw from previous videos, dA dt. I'm leaving out that coefficient for the same reason that I did in the previous videos. So for integrated rate law here, we just have minus k dt equals dA. So we integrate both sides here from t equals 0 to t equals t, if I can draw a t, to from initial concentration, concentration at t equals 0 to concentration at t equals t, which is a t. And so what we're going to get there for the zero order rate is you have integral of dt is t from t minus zero is t. So you have minus kt equals integral of dA is just a from zero to t. So we have a t minus a zero. So for zero order reactions, our integrated rate law is that a of t equals a naught minus kt. So it's just a constant decrease in time. You start off at some value and it decreases over time. So if we solve for the half-life of this reaction, taking our integrated rate law, we set this concentration equal to one half a naught. And then, well, we've got to isolate a naught on one side, so I'm going to subtract a naught from both sides. That's going to give me minus kt equals minus one half a naught because I have one half minus one it gives me minus one half. Uh, divide both sides by minus k to get my half life. So I have for a zero order reaction, my t half is going to be equal to the initial concentration divided by 2 times my rate constant. So that's the opposite of what we saw for the second order half-life. So for the, I guess we could call it zeroth if you want to call it, use that. I don't know if that's a word or not, but we'll roll with it. So the zeroth order half-life is going to, well, what's going to happen? So as your concentration of your reactant decreases, your half-life is decreasing in, in time. So half-life decreases with time during the course of a chemical reaction as your reactant concentration goes down and down. And your half-life is going to increase with your initial concentration. Because if your initial concentration is higher, then the rate's constant, doesn't depend on the concentration. So it's just going to be however long it takes uh, for that to decay down at that constant rate. So these are the three half-lives for uh, zero, first, and second order reactions. And we see uh, how different they are and why this is particularly useful for first order reactions in particular.